continue. Okay. Please continue to monitor your video and mute buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in the United States, Canada, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Zambia, Malaysia, Ghana, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape 
or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua, the Messiah which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. At this time, we will have our class, oh, I'm sorry, um, our 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. 
night to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword, peace, slogan, speak the truth. At this time, we will have our class dedicated in prayer by the Dean of the Arkport, New York class, Dr. Bonnie Snyder. We will have a song by Dr. Deborah Van Hook uh, and also Dr. Joyce Van Hook and maybe myself, uh, can't nobody do me like Yahshua. And our, we're gonna have transcript Tuesdays today. We'll continue with one spirit in a body. And our scripture readers are uh, Dr. Pandora Andrews of Detroit, Michigan and Dr. Graciela Underwood of Lansing, Michigan. We will now have our prayer, please. Good morning, brethren, or afternoon, or evening, whatever you are. Good day, good day brethren. <laughs> uh, could we all bow our hearts and minds to Yahweh through Yahshua? We thank you, Yahweh, for allowing us to gather once more in your great name of salvation. And we are so blessed to have been given that great name. We thank you, Yahshua, for the vision and revelation that you have given at the end of this age and throughout all the ages so that we can know Yahweh as he real, so we can know you as you really are and as you actually exist as the Holy Spirit now operating in us. Yahshua, we thank you so much for all that you have done and how you've kept us in the teaching, in the truth, and delivered unto us good teachers and given us everything we've needed to be able to come to class and learn. Thank you, thank you for all this. And Yahshua, we thank you for bringing us out of darkness. We understand through this great teaching that the world is in darkness and deception. And we see it every day in our own lives for the people that we know and we love. And we thank you for causing us to be brought out of that darkness through this great teaching, through your death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, Yahshua, for causing us to endure until the end and having us believe the things that we have heard from you. And we believe them because we were able to check and know for ourselves. And we have confidence because you've kept us this long that we will be safe and secure in the great name of Yahshua until the end. Thank you, Yahshua. Let's all say hallelujah. Praise be to Yahweh. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Our song. Well, can nobody do me like Yahshua? Can nobody do me like him? Can nobody? Can nobody do me like Yahshua? Cause he's my friend. Well, he healed my body. Told me to run on, he healed my body. Told me to run on, he healed my body. Healed my body. Told me to run on, cause he's my friend. Oh, oh. Joyce. Okay, nobody. Do me like Yahshua, okay, nobody. Do me like him, can't nobody. 
do me like Yahshua, cause he's my friend. Well, he'll guide me forever. Is the right thing, he'll guide me forever. To do the right thing, he'll guide me forever. To do the right thing, cause he's my friend. Phyllis. Can't nobody do me like Yahshua. Can't nobody do me like Yahshua. Can't nobody do me like Yahshua. He's my friend. He told me to run on and pick me up. He healed my body and told me to run on. Healed my body, told me to run on. He's my friend. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to turn the class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen of uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for getting up on a Tuesday morning, jumping out of bed shaking your head, washing your face, brushing your teeth, and you're here. We don't care if you have your pajamas on. Anyway, um, we've been reading One Spirit in a Body, and I tried to make, if you look at the top, it says One Spirit in a Body readable. I tried to make it bigger and wider with a clearer font so that it would be um, more legible. I know we were, and, and because I made it bigger, it's like 51 pages now. So I'm going to hand this over. Oh, I wanted to know if we have any brand new people with us, people who have never um, come to a lecture, never heard about this teaching before. Um, we would do something a little bit different. So is there anybody who's never in class before? We're very happy to have you. And uh, silence. OK, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we're ha happy and glad everybody was able to uh, join in. We started this transcript uh, last week, um, and uh, we're Yahweh willing, we'll finish it today. It's um, a lecture from Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, October 6, 1974. This was a um, a request from uh, Dr. Denise Campbell in London, England. So we started reading it and um, we plan to continue and finish it. Uh, nobody taught like him. He said he had a divine vision revelation and he proved it <laughs> by the charts that he made and uh, the things that he said. And uh, uh, there's always some good things that you'll get by um, researching the things that he taught. And so um, I'm not sure exactly where we are right now. There's different, there's different transcripts, even the one I have, you know, uh, you know, he'll say, you see what I'm talking about and you see, and you understand that. And they just took that out of this one. So I don't, it's kind of different. But anyway. Uh, yeah, it, it was from page 17. The other one, so I'm, I'm, we're just about there. He was talking about okay, following them up and everything. Yeah, and the version I have, it would be page eleven, but now yeah. look, yeah. So, but I just wanted to be make it a little bigger for us old folks. Yes, that's fine. Yay! Oh. Appreciate. <laughs> that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, the readers, I guess you can start reading. When... But now look, let's get back to where we were. Now, if you see the sign that was given, you see how they misunderstood the sign. 
he said there wasn't going to be no sign given. Pause and tape. From the bow of that boat, or from the side of that boat, Yahweh has prepared that big fish. And just all just as quick as you could stop him now is turning into darkness right then, just that quick. That is to say that the fish swallowed him up instantaneously. Well, what said? Well, what about that? Well, this is what about it. If that high priest went into the sanctuary, the most holy place here, just as he was passing through that veil, just that quick, instantaneously, just like Adam was receiving out there, instantaneously. No fooling around about. Now, they don't understand something like that at Ambassador College and around in the world. That man was engulfed in the belly of that fish. It was dark in there. In other words, he was in the grave. You understand what I'm talking about? Anybody don't understand it, raise your hand. Yes, there's a hand back there. Please stand up, stand up. I said that Jonah, when he was cast overboard, Yahweh had a big fish prepared there. So says the scriptures, not me. And when Simon leaned over the top of that boat, that fish had swallowed him up. That means it was instantaneous that the fish swallowed him up, hardly before he could get in the water. Well, that's what I was talking about. Now then, somebody else had their hands up. Don't be ashamed. Hold your hand up. All right. Someone asked a question, but it's not audible. Yes, but I ain't got to that. We're talking about the man, the fish being swallowed up. I haven't got to what you're talking about yet. I haven't. I haven't got, I haven't, I haven't finished on that. But I, I was trying to show you was this, that a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And they won't understand the sign. They're looking right straight at it. And Yash Messiah went out there healing everybody. And then they got nerve enough to walk up to him and say, show us a sign. Where have they been? All right, read on. Seventh chapter of Romans? Yes, seventh chapter of Romans. No, that was in Matthew that you just read there. A wicked and adulterous generation seek it after a sign. Now that tells me, don't, just one folk, one person or a couple of folks, don't do that. That whole generation was adulterous. That, that's what he said. A wicked and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. What? Look, folks, that's of now that we insist on keeping the law. Paul says, I speak to them that know the law, how that man is joined. A woman is joined to her husband as long as he shall live. What if he be dead? Then she's free? Now that's under the law. He's talking to them that know the law. Then she's free, then goes to marry somebody else. Now there's another secret that'll free you. And I want to get to that one too. Paul said this, Matthew 19. And then we'll come back to Romans, Matthew 19. Go ahead, start at the first verse. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. That when Yahshua had finished these sayings. When he had finished them sayings or talking to those people. He departed from Galilee. He departed from Galilee. And came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. Now look, folks, now just to read that you wouldn't hardly be aware of what's going on. This is what's happening there. When he came into the coast of Judea, now the tribe of Judah was, they were around the Messiah and the tribe of Levi. That was the tribe of Judah that was around. That is the kingship tribe. And that's where the Pharisees and scribes were. All right, read on. A great multitude followed him. And great multitudes followed him. 
And you know that just burned them up. They just burned up with envy, seeing great multitudes following him. People came, come down here, and they look around over this thing, and then they say, this is a good-sized church. Now, if I get in there and preach, I ought to get out of them services about so much and so much, and all I have to do is tell them Paul said and Peter said, and then they shall shell out and give me a big donation. We don't do that here. So they quit coming. <laughs> We ain't bothering with it. We used to be bothered with it, bothered with it bad. And then we put them up here to preach. Now look, Buster, you have, you're gonna have to stay till the meeting's over. And they thought, well, I got charge of the service and I'll just go all the way through. And that's all my folks is gonna hear. Mm -mm. We're gonna get up and grab him right back of the neck and shake his brains out. He ain't getting away with nothing. He don't know what. When he reads the Bible, he don't know what he's reading about. All and, right, read on. And great multitudes followed him. Now, great. There's some of them multitudes followed him. All right. And he healed them there. Now then, he healed them. Then they got nerve enough to ask him to show him a sign. Go on, Dr. Harrison, read. The Pharisees. The Pharisees. Go ahead. The Pharisees also came unto him. Now you see that? I told you. Didn't I tell you before he got to it? All right then. The Pharisees, they came unto him. Tempting him. Tempting him. Tempting him. And saying. Now wait now. Now don't you, don't want you to miss that one. Don't want you to miss that one. That's what it is in them people that's out there in them Roman Catholic churches and all that kind of thing. Them, them, them tempting to test you. Now, Yash the Messiah, I want to make this clear too while I'm at it. When he was baptized in the River Jordan, you're talking about you, the test, the devil went to him. Now, if he's going to go to him, what do you think about you? Now, he didn't tempt him. Now, that's the wrong word. And neither does he tempt anybody. They tested him. Not tempted. Tested. All right? The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? All right, read on. And he answered and said unto them. And he answered. And this is what he said. Have you not read? You're such good readers. Haven't you never read? When we started there a while ago, we said that we was talking to them that know the law. Now, this was back in the law. Haven't you never read back down in the law? Read on. That he which made them at the beginning that he, which made them at the beginning, made them male and female, made them male and female. Haven't you never read that? All right, read on. And said, and said, for this cause, hold it, hold it right there. I want you to see, said that. Now it don't, it don't talk like that over there in the law where you were reading at. Go back over there in Genesis. Read, Freddie. This now bone of my bone. Uh, Genesis 2, 23. Uh -oh. oh, Genesis, Genesis 2, 23, and Adam said. And now, you see, he said, Adam said. This is now bone of my bones. This is now bone of my bones. Flesh of my flesh flesh of my flesh and uh, oh she shall be called woman and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh 
and they shall be one flesh. And Adam never knew a thing about it because he was the only man and she was the only woman. And he didn't know nothing about it. Other words, what I'm talking about and pointing out here to you is, you see who said it? Yeah. How about that one? Repeat, Dr. Harris, who said it? And he answered and said unto them. And he answered and said unto them. Have you not read? Have ye not read? That he which made them. Now, we're talking about him that made them. All right, read on. At the beginning. At the beginning. Made them male and female. Made them male and female. And said. And he that made them male and female. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother. And shall cleave to his wife. And shall cleave unto his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh. Read on. Wherefore. Wherefore. They are no more twain. They ain't no more two. But one flesh. One flesh. What therefore seven, one, Yahweh has joined. Five, nine, one, seven, three. What therefore Yahweh has joined. Joyce, together. you have to mute. 7105 right? Seven, one, one, seven, yes. Mute Joyce, please. <laughs> Okay, are there any uh, questions or comments yet from uh, what we've read? And I've got a quick question right about the be beginning. Okay. Um, when Dr. Kinley was talking about uh, the high priest going into the most holy place instantaneously, right. he, he wasn't going into darkness, right? <laughs> he was changing. I realized that there was an instantaneous change right there, but you know, he, I can see it with Noah or I mean, Jonah, that he went in and instantaneously it became dark in the fish's belly. Right. Is there, am I missing something? I, I'm not sure what he was getting at with the, um, I'm sorry, but it just, I, I just had a question in my mind about it. <clears throat> Yeah, that, yeah, I had a question too. It seems like when he goes in, there's light in the holy place. He goes into the most holy place. It's like it's instantaneously he's in darkness. He's walking by faith and not by sight. Okay, that makes sense to me. All right. I wasn't sure because it is dark in the most holy place until he appears there in the vision. Yeah, okay. I got you. Thank you for the explanation. I see that now. If I had thought about it, I might have got it, but it just was, a, you know, a little bit pressing on my mind to see oh, what, it, what he was talking about. Workshop, you, you, you can ask a question. I know. Thank you, darling. That's it. Anybody else? Well, I heard something about how it had to be instantaneously because he couldn't get wet. Because what? He couldn't get wet. Like the children of Israel went in on dry ground and they didn't get wet. Oh, you're talking about Jonah. Yeah, isn't that what we were talking about? Well, she's talking about, he talks about when the high priest, I got to find it. When the high priest goes in instantaneous darkness, I got to find that. Oh, okay. I thought he said he was swallowed up with the instantaneous yeah. fifth, so I thought it related. Yeah, he talked about Jonah, and then he talked about the high priest. Let me see if I can find it. Come on, find this thing. Come on, help me. Okay. Yeah, I think. Okay. Well, it well, talks I, about. I, I should look up high priest, right? But it does talk about. Oh, there's race. instantaneous right there. 
okay. If that okay, here it is. If that yeah. high priest went into the sanctuary, the most holy place there, just as he was passing through that veil, just that quick, instantaneously, just like Adam was receiving out there, instantaneously, no fooling around about it. Yeah, I would like to know. Oh, so he's picking up that Adam when he eats of the fruit, he dies immediately. That's right. So he's talking about the high priest when he goes into the sanctuary, he's passing through a veil and there's a change instantaneously. That's right. Because he's in the presence of Yahweh. But come on, you know, come on, help me out. There's got to be more. Yeah, um, also with Eve coming out of Adam, that was an instantaneous change because she was then subject to vanity. She crossed the veil. Oh, Me, yeah. Adam's okay. Back. That she went, she ended up wanting to change. Yeah, but that wasn't what he was talking He was talking about as soon as they ate, they died instantaneously. And then he used to correlate in the prophets with, uh, I think it's Second Samuel 6 and 6. Because Yahweh told him in the day you eat thereof, you'll surely die. And see, I'll tell you, stuff that he's reading that, that we just read, see, it was taught in the school for a long time, you know, that uh, um, that when Adam says, therefore shall man leave his father, mother, cleave his wife, they shall be one flesh. Yeah. Then you read over there where we're reading in Matthew, he says, the one that created them said, "Therefore shall mother, fa uh, therefore shall man leave his fa father and mother and cleave his wife. They shall be one flesh." Right. And then they tried to say, "Well, see, that's who Adam was. That is the creator." Uh, but Doctor Kinley says Adam didn't know nothing about it. He didn't say it. Right. So uh, it's the one that created them. It said, you've got to be able to distinguish between the creator and, and the, the creature. creature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adam never knew a thing about it. And then later on, he's going to talk about when Eve got out of Adam, that she wasn't a sinful woman. They were teaching as soon as she got outside of him, she was an outlaw because he's the law. I mean, they, they're making up all kinds of stuff. Right. So, um, uh, so what, what y'all were talking about earlier, yeah, when he talks about Adam in the day tree of you'll surely die, that when he ate, he died instantaneously in his conscience or soul. Okay, so he, is that what he's what he means when he said, and Adam receiving out there? Huh? Oh, oh Adam he, received, yeah, he received the fruit he, from his received wife. the fruit, right? So that, that's what he's talking about right there, okay. Because that's what I was going to ask about Adam receiving. So, yeah, he was receiving the fruit. Okay, I got it. Yeah, she, uh, he, um, it said the woman uh, ate and gave her husband, he did eat. And when Yahweh asked him, Yahweh Elohim asked him, well, what did you, you know, uh, the woman that uh, she gave to me and I did eat, he said he's a confessed sinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said Adam was receiving out there. So, okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah, he, okay. he took it. He didn't like, oh wow, get away from me. Right. Because Adam he loved her. It. They were they mm -hmm. were one and he just died for her. Right. Hallelujah. Anything else people want to talk about? Uh you got second Samuel six and six, I think. Oh, you want you want us to read that? Yeah, okay. Second Samuel six and six. And when they came to Nashon threshing floor, Uzziah put forth his hand to the ark of Elohim and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzziah, and Elohim smote him there for his rashness, and there he died by the ark of Elohim. And so he was, touched, so he touched the ark. And uh, it, in Numbers 4 and 15, it says that you can't touch any holy thing lest you die. So where the Ark of the Covenant is in the most holy place, it's correlated with the tree. You can't eat or touch thereof. And the high priest didn't go in there touching the Ark, and he didn't go in there eating nothing neither. See, um, so to show that he died instantaneously, uh, 
well, one of the ways to show it is in First Corinthians 15 and uh, oh, touch not 50, I think it is, and then come down a little bit where it says in a moment a twinkling of an eye. And just where he died instantaneously on the day of Pentecost, didn't they say suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind? Isn't suddenly instantaneously? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's showing he's a quickening spirit. Suddenly. So where, where he became carnally minded that quick, they received the Holy Spirit that quick on the day of Pentecost. You see that? Yeah. He's a quickening spirit. Uh, so, so where do you want to read? So just start at 1550 and come down. Yeah. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither doth corruption inherit corrupt, incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So you see it when it says in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, that's how fast or instantaneously it'll happen. You see how quick it is. Yeah. And it's also showing you that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. I mean, the whole world thinks that they're physical you know, they're going to see their physical family, uh, you know, in heaven. And he said, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. They don't even know what heaven is. I mean, we're taught so many beautiful things in this school. So the, so that was the, uh, that was why we kind of went to the instantaneous, you know, and you know this too, when you, uh, maybe you don't catch something, and then all of a sudden he shows it to you in your mind, what, yeah. you know, the, uh, gives you a revelation, you understand, of, of something you didn't understand. And all of a sudden he gives it to you. And it's fast, isn't it? Right. You go, wow. Because <laughs> he's a quickening spirit. Yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden. So he's talking about these, uh, 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 well, more or less, I think what he's going to, he's showing about that man leaving his father, mother, cleave his wife, they shall be one flesh. And really the reality of it in the spirit, and I think he's going to say it here, I don't know, but he said it in other places. He says, you have to divorce the flesh to marry the spirit. And that's really what the gospel does. You know, in other words, it gets you from being carnally minded or physically minded or, you know, those fleshly things that you have on your mind. He washes and cleans you up. And, uh, and then, you know, because he's not going to marry a, uh, a bride. Yeah, a filthy bride <laughs> or a carnal minded soul. You understand? In other words, there's got to be a change take place before he really enters in. See, uh, some people like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit needs to get you. Okay. Uh, are we back on the thing now? Or wherever you that don't is. see it. You don't see the, the um Oh I see it. I don't I just know the I just uh we just had that little break there. Okay, so um so one flesh. We? Right here. That's one flesh. On. What therefore Yahweh have joined together? What therefore Yahweh has joined together? Let no man put asunder. Don't let man put asunder. Yahweh has joined them together. Let not man put asunder. Now you want to know something? What we have been doing, want to come on up with me? Yes. <laughs> Eve was not a sinful woman when Yahweh, when Yahweh brought him and gave him to her. And Adam was not a sinful man either. But we've just been running out there grabbing skirts and pants, just a woman, to satisfy our sexual passions, our lusts, and so forth and so on. And when the satisfaction is appeased, then you cast her out. And you understand what I'm talking about. Commence finding fault with one another. Then the next thing is a divorce. And if it's not a divorce, that's got 
out of style too. You just go on and leave him. <laughs> not really funny. You ain't call it grabbing, just grabbing, having no at all. But Yahweh, he sees it. And we just go on and get that one. That one Oof. don't do right. Then we just get <laughs> another one. <laughs> and if that one don't do right, drop them and go get another one. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. Oh, mercy. That's the truth. And that's what they call man and wife. All right, read on. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Uh-huh. What therefore? Me. Yes. I was told I could ask a question. And it may be that uh, I'm having some mental uh, deficiency of my own. But what happened to uh, the conversation about Jonah? and uh, being swallowed up by the fish. Uh, I, I don't get where we got from there to where we are now. They were answering where, a where question. Did I get lost? Yeah, they were answering a question. So they went back to that page to answer the question. And then they came back to pick up where we left off. They were asking a question about Jonah. They were asked, actually answering a question about the high priest, and someone mentioned Jonah yeah, because that I was before the high priest. Darkness and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, I still just wondered. I, I thought Jonah was being uh, uh, showing uh, bear, death bear, and burial and was looking for resurrection, but somewhere I got lost. Okay, thank you. Well, I it, there is a little theme he's having. Um, one of them is, is that um, in Matthew 12, 38, uh, we didn't pick it up. I mean, uh, that's where they come to him and say, uh, uh, Master, if you, you know, show us a sign and we'll believe you. And he said, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there'll be no sign given but of the prophet Jonah as Jonah was in three days and three nights in the fish's belly, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And that's what we read in the earlier lectures. You know, he was showing the phenomenal day and was showing the three days, three nights. Then he started going into Romans seven, how it talks about, uh, I speak to them that know the law, uh, how that a woman, as long as she's, uh, when she's married to a man, She's, uh, uh, you know, if she drops that man and picks up another man and her husband still be alive, then she shall be called an adulteress. So you see how he's showing the adulteress together. I mean, he's just kind of running it down. And then when you get this Roman, well, Romans 7 and 4 gives you the reality of it. It says that we are dead to the law by the body of the Messiah. When the Messiah fulfilled those things and died and nailed them to the cross, that's when he divorced Israel from being under the old covenant. That you might be married to another, even to him that's raised from the dead. So the true marriage now, you're, he, the old covenant, when he was in a physical body, he did do the, he fulfilled the old covenant and he, and he did do the physical things. But now he's a, his body is spiritual. He resurrected a quickening spirit. And to be in the spiritual body, you have to have, you know, uh, spiritual things are required. So the marriage now is in the spirit. So then he talked about in 19 chapter of Matthew, how that those people were fought, multitudes were following him and they were jealous of it. See how they were evil and adulterous. In other words, they wanted the people to follow them instead of following the Messiah. You see that? Yeah. So that's kind of how the adulterous uh, theme of how he's running it down. And we, we kind of picked it up in the middle of the lecture. So, um, and we kind of read back there with uh, Jonah and uh, that's how Jonah got into it. And then he was running other things, you know, how the Holy, Holy Spirit leads him. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's where we are right now. Okay. And then he's saying, uh, when Yahweh, 
whoever Yahweh is joined asunder, let no man put asunder. That means if you are, uh, and I remember there's one lecture where he says, I don't care how close you get to your wife. How are you going to be one flesh? Well, see, when the Holy Spirit has, uh, when you've been married to the Holy Spirit, there ain't no man can put that asunder. Nobody can take that out of you. You see what I'm talking about? In other words, uh, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And there'll be no divorce. He's okay? not going anywhere. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't leaving you. <laughs> but he was talking about how that, you know, that's not the way the world is. Uh, he was talking about how somebody will drop this one and pick up another one. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay, I think that's where we are now. They say unto him, why did Moses then command? I, I, that's all I can see. Okay. Now, they asked him a question, and he's answering them. That's the way we try to do down here. We try to let, we let the book answer. Read. Why did Moses then command to give a writing of dis divorcement? Uh-huh and to put her away if she were not pleasing in his sight. Uh -huh. He said unto them, uh -huh. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Permitted you to put away your wives. Permitted you. Moses did that. Permitted you to put away your wife. But from the beginning, it was not so. But from now Go right back. In the beginning, it was not so. All right, read on. And I say unto you. Now listen. He's got something to tell now. And I said unto you. Whosoever shall divorce his wife. Whosoever shall put away his wife or divorce his wife. Except it be for fornication. Hold everything. Hold everything. Now, that's that's other thing. Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and marrieth another. Read, Dr. Harris. And I say unto you, whosoever shall divorce his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. Uh-huh. And whoso marrieth her, which is divorced, doth also commit adultery. Now, that's under the law. Now, that's what it says under the law. Now, we could take time and go back there under the law and read it, but we don't want to do that. Now, what I'm trying to talk to you about out here and try to show you is this. Israel is Yahweh's wife. And Israel being Yahweh's wife, he was a good husband, but she wasn't no good, fleshly. Yahweh put her away, that's right, for three days. And he got married to another, Yahshua the Messiah. A divorce, divorced from the law and married to, in this dispensation over here, not married to the flesh, but married to the spirit. All right. Now you see what he said? Now he put her away for committing fornication. What was the other one? For adultery. Adultery. Now you got it straight? Now that's what the law said. Now go back to the seventh chapter of Romans. So then if while her husband lived. Now you see that? He comes right back on it, and he ain't saying this. All right, read on. So then, if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. That's under the law. That's why, because he said, I speak to them that know the law. Read. But if her husband be dead, but if her husband be dead, she is free from the law. She's free from the law. 
So that she is no adulteress. So that she is no adulteress. Though she be married to another man. Though she be married to another. Now you see what he's talking about? Read on down, Dr. Harris. Wherefore, my brethren. Wherefore, my brethren. Ye also are become dead to the law. Now, you have become dead to the law. That's the reason why you haven't got no business running out here just grabbing up a woman or a man that don't have the spirit in him. I'm just, I'm talking plain so you can understand what I'm talking about. Because they ain't going to behave. They ain't going to do right. And you ain't going to want to put up with it. And for the most part, you ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't right. And that's why you can't stand to put up with it. Yahweh suffered their manners in the wilderness back here and put up with it. But now it ain't going to work after the flesh no more. We're not married to the flesh anymore. It's the spirit now. And all this ignorance and all this, that's the reason why, let me see if I can say it this way. That's the reason why the Roman Catholic Church has this kind of a sign. When you're in the Roman Catholic Church, you're not supposed to marry anybody else but a Roman Catholic. But they will grant you to marry a Protestant if you make an oath that you will raise your children in the Roman Catholic Church. Now that's the devil negotiating for your children before they're born or even before they're conceived. All right, read on Dr. Harris. Excuse me, I, I just wanted to say something. I, I underlined that because I found it I found it very enlightening. And the fact that um he you know, he, he put it under the law, you know, who you're supposed to be with and who you're not supposed to be with. But then he was talking spiritually that we're not, we're not supposed to, if we follow after Yahshua and we're looking for a mate and we're looking for someone who has the Holy Spirit, do you see what a small number that is? <laughs> That means that you you really have to be straight and just following him. That I mean that just that 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 clears the board, it's, you know. So we we've got to be walking in righteousness, peace, joy. That's what you're looking for. It's not like oh how tall is he? How much money does he make? You know what you know what's what's the consistency of his hair? You're looking for Yahshua walking in another person. And, and, and that just, I, I underlined that. It was like, wow, why didn't I know that? <laughs> oh. Can I ask a question? This is Christina. Yes. Um, my question is coming from the previous paragraph where Dr. Kinley says, it actually starts with now that's under the law. Where is, where is it? Uh, what does it say? Say it again. It says now that's under the law. Now that's uh, yeah. Now that's under the law. Now that's what it says under the law. Now we could take time to go back there under the law. What is that? What you're yeah, talking about? Paragraph. It says, oh, so, so it says under the law, okay? Mm. Now that's under the law. Now that's what it says. Right, right the there. Mm -hmm. Now we could take time and go back there under the law and read it, but we don't want to do that. Now what I'm trying to talk to you about out here and try to show you is this. Israel is Yahweh's wife, and Israel being Yahweh's wife, he was a good husband, but she wasn't no good, fleshly. Yahweh put her away, that's right, for three days. And he got married to another, Yahshua Messiah. I don't understand that last statement, the last sentence. 
Yeah, yeah, we put her away. That's right. He put her away for three days. Is that he's on? Well, he's and on. he got married to another Yahshua, the Messiah. It sounds like <laughs> Yahweh married Yahshua. No, That's no, what no. I wanted he to ask. That's my question. question. He's talking about <laughs> Yahshua, the Messiah. She was he. She was married to Yahweh. Then after three days, the Holy Spirit has poured out. Now she's married to another. Who's the other? Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, so then the he should be she got married to another. Right. Not he. That's where I got confused because it said he. Right. She got married to another. Yeah, yeah I'm over here going, what? <laughs> yeah, that's thank you for I'm asking. Not. Yeah. Yeah, that's the marriage made in heaven. That's the true marriage. Well, the word that we're concerned about is where it says he. So it should be he sure. got married to another, comma, to Yahshua the Messiah. That's what uh, where my question came up. So I, I think it is probably should be oh, she. You know, I, got a I, I beg to differ on that because yeah. he's referring to Yahweh. And Yahweh's, I mean, the marriage is with the body the of the true Messiah. bride. Right. So it could so be this, that he got married to another. So Yahweh put her away. That's right. For three days, and he got married to another. So Yahweh got married to another? To he Yahshua got married Messiah. to another bride. She's clean now. Yeah, Israel that was under the law, he put away. She's right, I get that. Well, read, 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 read it in the Bible. It's Romans 7 and 4. Romans 7 and 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. So it's For telling them that, see, my brethren, so what he was, and that earlier he's talking about the, I know them that are under the law and so on, how that a man's, uh, you know, how someone's married to a man as long as he liveth, you know, he's under the law. Right. But says, but now you, so he says, you are become dead the law by the body of the Messiah. That means he, Yahweh divorced them when Yahshua died on the cross for the sin of the world. The flesh is being taken away. And so didn't it say he was buried three days, I think? You know, it's talking about the body of the Messiah. In other words, he died and buried, and he's, now he's resurrected. That you should be married, you should be married to another. It's talking about Israel being married to another, or you know, the soul of a man, even to him that's raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. So, yeah, the, the marriage is the is is to be is your soul uh, being married to the Holy Spirit. You understand? And bringing forth spiritual fruit. That's that's what it means. You understand? I, I see what you all are saying, though, about what was in the Thank transcript. You. Thank yeah. you. Praise Joshua. And so that's what happened. He divorced the flesh. It isn't about fleshly Israel now. It's about the spirit. See? That's why he didn't get married physically. Is because he is it, it, the souls of men is his bride. You understand? Yeah, he was waiting for his bride. Yeah. And somebody says, and isn't it also that we are the bride clothed in the sun? It's Carolyn said that. Yes. Right. All right. I want to make a comment on what Lenore said. If you go into uh, Psalms, the 19th chapter, or I think it's 19th. Okay, so where's the Psalms 19? Yeah, you said how people go after all that gold and stuff like that, but they should be looking at something else. Yeah. But 19, uh, 9 and 10. Psalms 19, 9. Psalms 19 and 9. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Yeah, see, so we should be looking for people who've got the, the fear of Yahweh and the, the righteousness in them. 
and they compare it with gold, but the men go after the flesh instead. Right. So that, that kind of goes along with what you were saying, right, Lenore? Yes, exactly. And okay. also, uh, uh, also um, Proverbs 31 um, talks about a, a righteous woman. Her, her price is far above rubies. And then it's talking about all her attributes. It's not saying, oh, she's so tall and she's got cute lips. It's not talking about that. Right. But yeah, it says the whole duty of man is to fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. Okay. And that, that kind of fits with the judgments and the fear of Yahweh is clean. Right. So somebody's following Yahweh's way, that's the ones we're supposed to be looking for. Yeah, and that's rare. Yes. <laughs> That's it. That's, I just want to comment on that one thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh oh, where were we? A little further. Okay, stop. That's it for adultery. Adultery. Now, you got it straight? Now, that's what the law said. Now, go back to the seventh chapter of Romans. So then, if, while her husband liveth. Now you see that? He comes right back on it, and he ain't saying this. All right, read on. So then, if while her husband liveth. She be married to another man. She be married to another man. She shall be caught an adulteress. That's under the law. That's why, because he said, I speak to them that know the law. Read. But if her husband be dead, but if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. She's free from the law. So that she is no adulteress. So that she is no adulteress. Though she be married to another man. Though she be married to another. Now you see what he's talking about? Read on, Dr. Harris. Wherefore, my brethren. Wherefore, my brethren. Ye also are become dead to the law. Now, you have become dead to the law. That's the reason why you haven't got, no, oh, we, we've done this part. Okay. Well, you, you haven't got, again, it's very good. Okay. You, that's the reason why you haven't got no business running out here, just grabbing up a woman or a man that don't have the spirit in him. I'm just, I'm talking plain so you can understand what I'm talking about. Because they ain't going to behave. They ain't going to do right. And you ain't going to want to put up with it. And for the most part, you ain't right. You ain't right. And that's why you can't stand to put up with it. Yahweh suffered their manners in the wilderness back here and put up with it. But now it ain't going to work after the flesh no more. We're not married to the flesh anymore. It's the spirit now. Okay, and I just wanted to say one more thing. He says, you're not going to put up with it. And he said to Hosea, go marry a whore. Mm. Because the way Israel is treating me is like I'm married to a whore. And so he has Hosea marry a whore. And, and the, the children have all these different names. And one of the, the children's name is not your people. It's like, whoa. You know, because she's, she's a whore. So he was saying that that's what's going on. And then um, she, she leaves him and then he goes and he speaks words of comfort to her. And when I read that, I said, what? <laughs> you know, she's a whore. She should be dead. But he's, he's, reading, he's speaking words of comfort to her. And that's what he did to Israel. And that's what he did to us because we were whores. Right. Because we were going after this and after that. And he wasn't center most in our mind. And that's what he was shown with, with, the, with the book of Hosea. And when I read it, I said, man, it is hard to be a prophet of Yahweh. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody wants to, I want you to strip naked and I want you to walk around naked because that's the way Israel is going to be going out of here. And incidentally, they stripped, him, they stripped Yahshua naked. So it's, it's you know, people, um, they want to, in the Catholic Church, they want to be saints and everything. But Yahweh was demonstrating something through his prophets. It wasn't no easy ride. That's all I have to say. 
and all this ignorance and all this. That's the reason why. Let me see if I can say it this way. That's the reason why the Roman Catholic Church has this kind of a sign. When you're in the Roman Catholic Church, you're not supposed to marry anybody else but a Roman Catholic. But they will grant you to marry a Protestant if you make an oath that you will raise your children in the Roman Catholic Church. Now that's the devil negotiating for your children before they're born or even before they're conceived. All right, read on, Dr. Harris. Wherefore, my brethren, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are come dead to the law. You're become dead to the law. By the body of the Messiah. By the body of the Messiah. That ye should be married to another. That you should be. You shouldn't be married to the flesh. And when you say that you, as Gentiles, you never was in the first place. And the Gentiles, they did by nature better than Jews did. Look how Pharaoh, when Abraham went down there, Abraham went down there and Sarah was a good looking woman. And Abraham told him that she was his sister. She, she was his sister and a husband too. And Pharaoh put, took and put her in his harem. And when he found out that she was Abraham's wife, she was Abraham's wife said, look, you take your wife and get out of here. You come might near come, making me commit an awful sin. That's a Gentile. All right, read on, Dr. Harris. That ye should be married to another. All right, read on. Even to him who is raised from the dead. Even to him that is raised from the dead. That we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. Dr. Harris, drop on down there in that seventh chapter and the... The 14th verse? 14th verse. For we know that the law is spiritual. Now, now we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal. But now, there's where, our, where your problem is. Now, I want you to understand this. Paul is talking about himself in his carnal state under the dispensation of the law. He is. Now, the reason I brought this up and brought it up this way is because there's some misunderstanding. And they think that them satanic spirits is incarnated right in a person with the Holy Spirit. And that's just not so. You ain't got no two spirits in you like that. No, sir. All right, read. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Sold under sin. For that which I do. Therefore, that which I do. I know not why. I don't even know why I do it. Student body laughs. <laughs> But I'll tell you, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, just like, let me put it like this. They have built in them desires. That is, a man doesn't have control of his body. The woman oh. has the control over his body. And the man has control over the woman's body. Now he said, as what I do, well, now, there's a little bit difference in Paul here because Paul was a eunuch and he didn't have none of them sexual passions and desires and whatnot. And so he said, now what I do, talking about many other things besides that one thing, said, I don't know why. Read on. For what I would. For what I would. That I do not. He means that's what he don't do. That's in his carnal state under the dispensation of the law. And listen, he told Timothy he was an injurious person and he was a blasphemer, but he received mercy because he did it through ignorance. 
he didn't know that he was to be an apostle until Yahweh appeared or Yahshua appeared to him in the on the highway going to Damascus and he's taking Judah's place. All right, read on, Dr. Harris. What I hate, that I do. But what I hate. That I do. That I do. Now, that's just the way some of us are. You want to do nice and you want to be a good fellow and all like of that. And you just can't behave yourself to save your life. Well, do you know what your problem is? You're carnal. Then you commence to hunt around and try to find some justifiable excuse for your, your disobedience. Then you get hot with somebody because they don't believe you're right. You're just as wrong as two left shoes. That's right. All right, read on. If then I do that which I would not. If I do that I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. I consent. I have to agree with the law that it that the law is good. Read. Now then, it is no more I that do it. Now, it's no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. But sin or the demonic spirit or the devil that's in you. Read. For I know that in me. For I know that in me. That is my, in my flesh. That is in my flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. There is no good thing. For the will to do good is present with me. For the will to do good is present with me. But how to perform. Wait a minute. When he was down there killing them people and persecuting him, his will was to do good. He thought he was right. He wasn't. Didn't mean to do wrong. When he's killing up them people and all, he thought they was doing wrong because they wouldn't keep the law. He willed to do good. All right, read. But how to perform that which is good, I do not. I but do. now, now, how to, how to perform. Now, all you have to do, if you don't know how to perform, is ask the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestants, and they'll tell you how to perform. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, before we go on here, um, my question is, um, okay, so he was talking about the satanic spirit. Um, so is this where, uh, in the carnal mind, so is this where the, the, the satanic spirit or, uh, the devil jump in and out of bodies? How does that go? If, if there's not two spirits in a body, then, um, when, like he said, he find himself doing wrong, um, what's in the body at that time is that when the the carnal mind at the same time is the carnal mind and the demonic spirit that is taking the body over at that moment well, because uh, again we know that um um when when uh those bodies washed up on shore though the those spirits got up out of the, those bodies and got into the children of israel so how I'm trying to find the distinction between how the the spirit jump in and out of these bodies or uh, under, when under, you do under, right and wrong. Under the old covenant, they it, it would come and go, but he's describing this man here. He thinks he's doing the right thing, but it's a, a satanic spirit that is telling him, go out, kill the people. You don't have to listen to them. You understand what I'm saying? And it's yeah, not I, until the preaching of the the preaching of the gospel that mm. the veils are come from his eyes and now he can see. So he thinks he's doing the right thing, but he's being led by the devil. The, the mystery of righteousness is not telling him to go out and kill. It's a mystery of iniquity. And it's because he is under 
the, the demonic spirit. When he okay. receives the Holy Spirit, then he undergoes a change. And then okay, he's so, healed. Okay, so I understand that, um, you know, back then under the law, the, the Holy Spirit had not been poured out. But what I'm saying is um, after the Holy Spirit was poured out and um, you have, uh, let's say you have the Holy Spirit living in you, but yet and still, if you, uh, oh, I guess those would be called, you, you're making mistakes. That would be right. something Kind of like what's happened yeah. with Peter calling for water. Yeah, making a, making a mistake. Okay, so I can look at it like that. Okay, I got it. Can I just say something? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say one thing, and you can be corrected. That's correct. Yeah, you accept right. you correction. Can be correct and so accept correction. Okay, I got it now. Go when ahead. Paul, uh, when Paul is writing about him, when Paul's writing this, he's talking about him in his carnal state. He's not talking about when he has the Holy Spirit. That's correct. He's he's okay. reflecting back when he was carnal. Yes. He, he's yeah. Okay. Back. It's kind of like when we say, when we say before I came to this Holy teaching. Spirit, this yeah. is how we were. So. You That's right. Like no jackass. He's he's right. just reflecting back now to, to when he was in that state. He thought he was doing right. Okay. But now when he's in now the Holy Spirit then got him. He he reflecting back and he's realizing what a jackass he was. Yeah, I am understanding that. That's that's where he was talking about. But I was just bringing it forward to what happens when. Um, people that are saved or have the Holy Spirit when when things happen and they do something and um, is that is that the Satan getting in the body but no it's it's been explained that is it's not that it's just that um, those are mistakes well if you got well generally the Holy Spirit when he's going to correct you. Yeah, he's going to correct you. He's going to prevent you from doing. In other words, he's the law in you, and you're not going to break that law. Right. You're not right. supposed to break the law if the law is in you. That's all I got to say about that. You right. Know? Yeah. He, I just, but but the, but the law in you is different from the law in me mm -hmm. because there's no written law anymore. Now okay. it's the law of the spirit. Right. But that's all yeah, I but I do say. understand that this is what, what we're reading is what had happened then. Before he's reflecting back before he had the Holy Spirit, before he got right. knocked down. Before he and got knocked down there. on the road yeah. to Damascus, and those yes. were taken off his eyes. Right. Now he's reflecting back. Now Thank I, you, I appreciate maybe it. Maybe someone could explain it better than I can, but. Oh, know, no, you did well. You I know, understand it. He's I, not I talking about when he had the Holy Spirit, he's going around killing people and all the rest of that stuff. Right. Oh, no, I, I got that. I got that. Yeah, that wasn't my question, but I do understand that. Okay. okay. Yeah. May I make a Thank comment, you. please? Good. Yeah. Uh, my, my understanding, um, and it, it's already been said again, but I'd like to comment that when you, when my understanding is, that when one received the Holy Spirit, that quickening spirit that we talk about, it does not mean that you are perfect. It, you will make mistakes, but as it was said, uh, when, when you are shown the mistake by the law and the prophet, not just one talking, but by the scriptures, and you see the correction and accept it, that's what you call, as to my knowledge and understanding, is that's growing in grace. That has already been said, but I just like to comment on that. Yes, ma'am. And that's exactly where um, uh, Dr. Allen had brought me to, and I got the understanding from that. And so, oh. yes, I do understand. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. To repeat it, you know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and I is. appreciate it. Yeah, it was great. All right, thank you. Yeah, I thank you. I make mistake. I made a mistake buying this old raggedy car. Now I got a lot of money in it. Now I learned from that. But I'll talk to y'all later. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, I'm, let me make one comment. This is Terry Welch. Uh, the reason why mistakes can be made by some and not others, or mistakes can be made by a person and then later on, because of correction, they won't be made again, right. is simply because of what a person knows or doesn't know at one time. Not everybody knows and understands the same thing. I'll give you an example in the Bible. Uh, the uh, uh, deacon Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in water, and the Holy Spirit was right there with him. But the Holy Spirit did not stop him from water baptizing. And yet, when Peter went to water baptize the Gentiles, the Holy Spirit did stop him. What was the difference? The difference was primarily that Peter was one of the 11 people that Yahshua told that John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Mm -hmm. Philip was not party to that. He, 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 was not, he had not heard that from the words of Yahshua. And remember, the job of the Holy Spirit is to teach all things and bring all things back to their remembrance, whatever Yahshua said to them. Well, Philip was not one of the them that Yahshua had told that uh, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. So we're responsible for what we have been made accountable for. In other words, we're made accountable, we're made responsible to act appropriately, but it's Yahweh's responsibility to make sure we're taught that first. And so, as has been said, you have to grow in grace, which means you have to learn as you go along. You're responsible for what you've learned. And part of the learning process is sometimes making mistakes, not sins, but mistakes, and then uh, being corrected. Well, I do, I do like the word mistakes because, you know, I do and say and be mad and do things at myself afterwards. And then I have to ask Yashua to forgive me and all of that. So that's where I had, was bringing it forward, not from what I knew had taken place with Paul at this time, but I was just bringing it forward what, you know, to, um, what is this synthetic spirit in me, you know, doing things and saying things and having me think this way. So, um, uh, me understanding that, it, it, you know, that's why I use the example of what happened uh, when the children, of, when uh, those satanic spirits got up out of the bodies when they crossed the, uh, 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 the Red Sea. That's why I made that. I, and that was before the law, before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So I do understand that. I was just saying, you know, just sometimes in your life, as, you, as you're growing in grace, that these these uh, certain things may occur where um, you have those um, you know you you may say or do something that you afterwards are was like why did I do that why did I say that you know and then you be a, you you kind of condemn yourself and be upset with yourself because you're like you know Yashua was in me why did I do that or I shouldn't you know be that way or whatever but I do know that it's a process. And, and I'm glad to hear everything that everybody has had to right. say about it because I do know it's a process and I'm growing in grace. So we want to pass you, every test, in other words. That's his job to be around to influence you at all times. He's, exactly. he's always around like your shadow. He yes, sir. He ain't going to leave you alone. He's going to, he, he don't leave me alone. I understand. I he don't, but, you know, he, he don't leave me alone, you know, so I'm quite sure he ain't going to leave you alone either. It's, That's it's right. Because I heard if you can't do right on earth, Yahweh know you can't do right in heaven. I know I'm not using the right language and all that, but this is your test that Yahweh 
know you want to do right because he, he feels if you can't do right now, you ain't going to do right later. And mm -hmm. that's listening to your conscience and this discerning who's talking to you at that particular time you're under that test. Right. Uh, I wanted to know if we, somebody else? Okay. Uh, it's just Miss Robinson. I just wanted to add to that or to this conversation that we're all trying to learn and know how to be the best that we can be. What we also need to take into consideration when we falter that uh, the Holy Spirit is the only perfect one. So he, he, dw he dwells in us, but he is the only perfect one. We are not perfect. Not yet. We are not perfect. We may yes, be sir. perfect when we become like him after the transition. But while we are in this flesh, we are not perfect. That, that's just a comment. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank and you. I, I was going to suggest that we just read um, Acts 9 through 16 so we can see what he went through. Acts well, 9. let's just, okay. okay. Can we just We're read that? Well, I mean, the whole. Uh, I just want to read it. Go ahead. You want to finish the transcript, too. Why? Uh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> can we read it, please? Come on. Read, please. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of Yahweh, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, master? And Yahshua said, I am Yahshua whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to, to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Yahshua, what wilt thou have me to do? And Yahshua said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said, Yahshua, in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Yahshua. And Yahshua said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul or of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Yahshua, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy sons at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But Yahshua said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Yeah, so that's what I just wanted to show shows that. And Desiree um, pointed that out to us. Thank you very much, Desiree. Hallelujah. And so, somebody else had said something. Uh, Dr. Kent has also posted. Yeah, uh, she says, we can hear those satanic spirits trying to influence us. They don't have to be in us to do that. Can't you hear sounds coming from outside of your house or mm -hmm. home? Someone knocking on your door from the outside? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's been great. Thank you. I get it. And Lucy was looking at Romans, the eight chapter says there is no now no condemnation. So he's talking about after he's talking about before and then after his con cover, um his conversion, mm. he's undergoing mm -hmm. a change. Right. Thank you all. Yeah, so that was it. Praise so, Joshua. So where are we? Oh, Dr. Kenley, where it says keeping the Lord's Supper. Yes, sir. Well, it starts with, but now, now, how to, how to perform. Okay. But right. now, now, how to, how to perform. Now, all you have to do if you don't know how to perform is ask the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestants, and they'll tell you how to perform. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping the Lord's suppers, christening little babies, he's performing. But Paul didn't know how to perform because there ain't no performance to it. Right. He's just preaching the gospel. And by the foolishness of preaching, the gospel will save them that believe. That's what he sent them out to do, to preach the gospel, not to perform like that. All right, read on, Dr. Harris. For the good that I would. For the good that I would. I do not. I don't do that. But the evil which I would not. That I do. Okay, that's you. I'm sorry. <laughs> that I do. Now that's what he was doing. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. Read on. Now, if I do that, I would not. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. Now, you see that? It's no more me that's doing it. But sin that dwelleth in me. But sin that dwelleth in me. All right, read. I find then a law. I find then a law. That when I would do good. That when I would do good. Evil is present with me. Evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Uh-oh. I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. The law of the spirit of life. Warring against your carnal mind. Mm -hmm. You sit up here with the law of the spirit preaching to you, trying to tell you, and then that other law, that carnal mind, just like you say, you keep carnal ordinances as far as you're eating and drinking, but that carnal mind in you be raised up just like he did, just like he's talking about. That's that other law that's warring against the law of the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, read on. And bringing me into captivity. And that's brought him into captivity. To the law of sin, which is in my members. To the law of sin, which was in his members. Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of death, of this Ooh. body of death? Who shall deliver him from the flesh, from the body of this flesh? Oh, wretched man. That's what he was a wretched very wretched man. I'm talking about Saul under the dispensation of the law. Look, I've tried my best. I've done everything I know to do to try to show you something. This is what I told you. I told you that you have chapter and verse. The chapter is divided. The subject may be up here in this one and the predicate down here. And when you put the chapter in there and you begin with the chapter and start down just like you might take the sixth chapter, what shall we say then? Then the subject is back up here. Now here you got one of them things. Now you're fixing to find out something now. You're fixing to find out whether this is fact or not, that there's two spirits in a person. Now we're fixing. Now we're fixing to find out something. All right, now, that was the seventh chapter. I got one more verse. You got one more verse, oh, wretched man. 
O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? That's right. Thanks be to Yahweh. Thanks be to Yahweh. I have deliverance. I have deliverance. Through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Our Through Savior. Yahshua, the, our Savior, we have deliverance. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh. That's right. While my flesh is subject to the law of sin. That's right. My, my flesh is subject to the law of sin. All right now, just go right on, just like you've been doing. There is therefore now. Now, now here's where I'm going to get straightened out now. Now, now, here's where we're going to get straightened out. We're going to find out whether there's two spirits in there or not. Repeat again, Dr. Harris. There is therefore now. Now, there is therefore now in this present dispensation and age, read. No condemnation. No, no there isn't no condemnation. All right, read on. To them which are in Yahshua, the Messiah. To them which are in Yahshua. There ain't no condemnation there. To them that are in. Read. Who walk not after the flesh. You won't walk after this. Back here, after the flesh. All right, read on. But after the spirit. But after the spirit. Read. For the law of the spirit of life. For the law. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hold everything now. For the law of the spirit of life, look, folks, I want you to get this one understood. If you don't understand nothing else, you have been under the law of the spirit of life, everything, and you are going to never be from under it because that's not the law contained in the ordinances of the Jews. That's the difference. Now then, we come to the civil law, too. Peter said, obey the ordinance of man for Yahweh's sake. You ain't got no business out there running through the red light and all. Obey the city ordinances. All right, read on, Dr. Harris. For the law of the spirit of life. For the law of the spirit of life. In Yahshua the Messiah. I want you to know he was not a sinner. And I want you to know that he had the law of the spirit of life in him. And the devil was not in him. But that didn't keep the devil from testing him out there in the wilderness. Yes, indeed. And anytime you get in this school, you're going you're gonna to have a test. And your fight ain't going to always be out yonder somewhere either with your old lady. It's going to be right up in here. War going on. Warring in. Every time you get up in the morning, first thing you do is kill old you. And you heard it. And make sure he's dead, too. Don't. Don't take no chances on it. Make sure he's dead. <laughs> Time to take a little test and see whether he's breathing or not. <laughs> is he breathing? Fix him up some more. <laughs> Don't leave there till he's dead. That's you I'm talking about. That's right. Now look what he said. Repeat it again. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah. Now this is what I want you. For the law of the spirit of life. That's L-S-D. We ain't gonna go off on no trip. All right, read on. Now look, the law of the spirit of life had made me free from the uh, law. You're, you're reading Dr. Kelly. Has oh, I'm made sorry. Have made me free from the law of sin and death. Now look, the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. He's delivered from that. And we are not actually married to the flesh. But now, the seventh chapter, I, I ain't got time to go into it, but the seventh chapter of Corinthians. Now, if you are, go in, you went and got a wife before you got in the school and before you had any sense. <laughs> Then you just keep her, if she be pleased to dwell with you. If she ain't pleased to dwell with you, let her go. 
Then if she goes, let her remain unmarried. If she takes a notion she wants to be married, let her go back to her husband. Wow. Now, how about that? Now, look, folks, we do know what we're talking about down here in the school. Ephesians 5, 22. And let's hurry now, because I know the time is. Ring the bell on me, too. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband. That's what we're talking about, husbands and wives. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. As unto the Messiah. Own husband. Submit yourself to your own husband. To your own husband. Now, we ain't going to do that. No siree. You'll have an awful hard time trying to find a woman to do that. You know what she'd say to you? <laughs> <laughs> say, look, Buster, I'm working out here on the job. I'm helping out with the expenses. And first one thing and another around here. And then Paul said that a man would seek to please his wife. Don't forget that. And she's helping to bring in some bread and some meat. So I'll help make the decision around here. I ain't going to submit to nothing. <laughs> All right, read on. <laughs> All right, read on. For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the hind parts of the wife. <laughs> <laughs> He's a panty waist. All right, read on. Even as the Messiah is the head of the assembly. Even as the Messiah is the head of the assembly. And he is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the assembly is subject unto the Messiah. Uh -huh. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now it says to their own husbands, not to somebody else's. You heard me. You ain't blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, this is this is what this thing really amounts to. And what it really shows up is, is Yahshua and his wife or Yahweh and his wife back under the wilderness in the wilderness. And you are not justified. You're just simply not justified. And then these folks running around out here every time, just like I just got through telling you, they put this one down and go and get another one. Put that man and woman. Mickey Rooney been married about seven times and that's the way they do. Now look, if you are fortunate enough to have a wife or a husband and you're in this school and you're married to them and you didn't know the reality of the thing, hold what you got. All right, read on doc. Husbands, love your wives. Now here we are back again, husbands, love your wives. Now it says wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands. Now the husband ain't gonna give way. I got on the pants, I'm the boss around here and you heard me or else get your rags and get out of here. Husbands, love your wives. Even as the Messiah also loved the church. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> you see that now? Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Messiah or unto Yahweh. I ain't gonna do it. Husbands, love your wives even as Yahshua Messiah also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of the water, by the word, that he might pre present it unto himself, a glorious assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. Is that almost? Now, if you thought I had went off somewhere and forgot, skip on down and get the last two verses at the end of it. This is a great mystery. Now you see what your problem is? This is a great mystery. You didn't understand Paul over there. Now look, folks, these people down under the dispensation of the law, I'm going to say this to you real easy. They did not have the Holy Spirit. They could not keep this law. Now, Paul was speaking to them that know the law. The law said, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's what the law said. But now, that's what Yash Messiah said. I didn't. He said, a wicked and adulterous, that's what it was. And that's what it was out here in the wilderness. 
That's what it was all the way through. And that's what it still is. Now look, suppose I just go ahead on and tell you this. You're my wife. You're married to me. Now, how do you like that? That's all right. You like that? Yeah. Yes. You mean to tell me all these folks here is yours? Sure. Well, there's some men in the assembly too. You had them too. There's no difference between a male and a female. Now Yahweh sent me to you, and it is the spirit of Yahshua Messiah that's in you that makes me yours, and you are mine. You're my charge, and you're my wife. Now, don't you think I ought to be justified in telling my wife what it's all about? This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning the Messiah and the assembly. But I speak concerning the Messiah and the assembly. Now, did I get over anything to you? I want to. I want to. I'm trying to quit. I'm tried to show you where Paul, when he was talking there about why he, when he would do good and all, that's him in his carnal state. That's him in his depraved state. That's him under the law. That's him with a demonic spirit in him. Then he couldn't do that what he would. Now, if you bring it on over here, you got people now trying to do their things back there and they can't do them. It ain't doing a bit of good. And then they jump up and lie about it, eating. Do what you call eating the Lord's Supper and rub his belly and say, oh, it sure does feel good. And as Dr. Harris said this morning, a little old wafer got hung up in there in maybe a cavity in his tooth and didn't even swallow it down in his belly. All this was given. Listen, folks. Now listen. We want to make this real plain. Keeping the Sabbath day. Circumcision. Physical water baptism. Ten commandment law. Sacrifices and whatnot. Roger. All of it was given to the Jew. There's nothing in your Bible that says anything about it being given to you as Gentiles. That was all under, that was in another world, another age. You are in a new world. You You're are in a spirit, spirit world. world. I'm sorry. Paul said that as many as are led of the spirit, they are the sons of Yahweh. And Yahweh, look here, folks, all these, I want you to see what I'm talking about. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. All of these natural sacrifices and everything and all this water baptizing, all this circumcision, every bit of it pointed to the spirit. Now, when you got the spirit, you've fulfilled everything of it in Yahshua, the Messiah. And these lying bastards and devils out here, and that's why, oh, he done cursed me now. Now, I, oh, he done cursed now. Now, I know he's getting mad now. End of side two, tape one. This last portion was included in the original transcript, but was not included on the audio tape. It was probably lost in duplication. No. Anytime you can't be chastised by the scriptures, you are a bastard. Joshua said that. Yahweh chastens every son who he receiveth. And if you receive not chastisement, then you are a, that's the 12th chapter of Hebrews, a Hebrew, it's in the book. We tell you what the scriptures say, and you got to go out just the same and pay no attention. You are a bastard. And let me tell you this, you're good for the lake. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I hope you got something out of it. That's the end of the transcript. Hallelujah, praise Joshua. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, it was. Very clear. Yeah, so he was showing the difference before. He received the Holy Spirit and then the conversion after. 
So there's a difference. It's showing the conversion of the soul. Soul can be, that's why we came into class and said we were dead because we didn't know. Right. You're carnal minded, you're deceived. Uh, you could be influenced or you could be, yeah, you, uh, your soul could be possessed by satanic spirits and was. And uh, this will cause you to be wrong. Uh, even if you tried to do right. But by the preaching of the gospel, demons can be cast out and you can be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. So. Uh, yeah. And Carolyn said, while we are in the flesh, we are learning, but not perfect. The Holy Spirit is our teacher and perfecter. We are being refined removing all impurities and purification is a process that's right so you can see the chastisement it's by the correction in the scriptures and says if you be without we might as well read that hebrews 12 and 5 and and down through a little bit but and he said chastised by the scriptures. And a lot of people say, it doesn't matter what you say. It should. Mm -hmm. I don't care if that's in the Bible. You understand? And have a private interpretation of it. Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of Yahweh, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dwelleth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. That's Further it. So if you don't... Um... It's everyone's a partake. Everybody's had to be corrected. <laughs> but if you be without chastisement, you don't want to be corrected. Whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. That means you're not born of the spirit. Uh, a bastard means they don't know what their father is, who their father is. You understand? And people don't know who their heavenly father is. Right. And then when they're corrected and they're told and they're told to do the research, they just go on. They don't want to accept the correction. And that's what makes them a bastard. And it's correction through the scriptures. Because if the Holy Spirit's in you, wouldn't, wouldn't you believe what the Holy Spirit said? Right. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna, you know, you just have to say, well, I was wrong about that, and drop that, and move on, you know. And that's what the school <laughs> did. All of us were wrong. Go ahead. Man. Right. May I ask for the, the title again of that particular transcript? One yeah. Spirit in a Body. Okay. Dated October 6, 1974. Thank you. Thank you. It's also called No Two Spirits in a Body. Just, they've had different, uh, like I say, I. I've, I don't know. It, I guess people's transcribed it a few different times and called it different things, but it is October 6, 1974. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, see, we finished it. See, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> and there, there is a question, but did you want to close out the class and then address the question? or Because there's a question in the chat. Yeah, we have one minute to the bell. So. Let's close it out. Question. One minute to the bell was stated. Mm -hmm. So, how come Christina isn't talking? I thought it would be more convenient to put my question in the chat. Oh, <laughs> I did I talk was... earlier, remember? <laughs> so, are we saving my question for later? Yeah, that's well, what I was gonna, asking everybody if we wanted to close out and then the dresser. Yeah, question. we're going to close our class first. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Okay, so um, it's nine o'clock.
Okay, so we thank everyone that came out to study with us. We had up to 62 people or attendees with us today. And we thank everyone that uh, participated and had questions and listened and enjoyed what uh, Yashua showed us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. in Malaysia. Our doxology is from the last two verses of the book of Jude uh, from the Holy Name Bible. Let us all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahshua. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah, brethren. Hallelujah. Okay. What's your question? Okay. So in the transcript where it says, now when you got the spirit, you fulfilled everything of it, Yahshua the Messiah you know, dash, dash, Yahshua the Messiah. Um, at first, when I heard that read, my mind didn't get it, but now I'm beginning to realize that that was meaning. Well, what I'm getting out of what it means is that everything that Yahshua the Messiah fulfilled under the law, mm -hmm. that if Yahshua is in us, that it's fulfilled in us. So my question was, aren't we in the spiritual fulfillment now? Yeah, I think you answered it, didn't you? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. and they answered right. me, I yes. Did. Those those souls, those souls yeah. that 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 believe in Yash Messiah, they are in the spiritual fulfillment now. So well he says now when you got the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. That's showing that uh you fulfilled everything of it in Yahshua Messiah. Yeah. If he got the spirit, yeah. And then he then he talks about and these lying bastards and devils out here. You know, they're out there, the ones saying you have to eat the Lord. Everything Yahshua fulfilled, they're bringing the natural over and deceiving people with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that he fulfilled it. And that's a that's the desolation, the abomination of desolation to call Yahshua a liar and to do the things that he fulfilled. I mean, how can the Holy Spirit call the Holy Spirit a liar? And so we were all corrected. We are, you know, the, the devil's out here lying and deceiving people. But uh, you can be resurrected through Yahshua the Messiah. And yes, Yahshua in you, that's the, that's it. Yahshua in you is your only hope of glory, right? That's right. right. Yeah. And so, yeah, when he was in the flesh, he did fulfill physical physically the things that were before the cross and and everybody were sinners so he had to come and die for the sin of the world he came to take away the sin of the world and then when he resurrect that body took on the sin that body was buried but when he resurrects uh the sanctuary is being cleansed and he he has no sin when he resurrected that's without sin so if he pours out the holy spirit that makes that makes you without sin if you be a true reason. so that's the spirit fulfillment so now he is filling you full of the spirit and that's what's on this side of the cross yep so the fulfillment's two parts physical when he's in it, walking around the flesh and then now since he's poured out the holy spirit it's about the spirit now worshiping him in spirit and truth are there more details in the scripture somewhere you can point me to in the Bible that can give me more uh, about what the spiritual fulfillment is? I know you said that Yahshua in you, him being resurrected in us. 
looking at this chart she put up here about on the other side of the cross. Maybe I should focus on this heart and everything that's in here. Well, well, one way that he put, well, yeah, all those things do mean something. Matter of fact, that last thing at the bottom there, Galatians uh, 6 and 8, because we just read the law of the spirit of life in Yash Messiah. And Dr. Kelly said, well, how do you get into, uh, how do you get the law of the spirit of life, which is in Yash Messiah, made me free from the law of sin and death. He said, well, how do you get in Yash Messiah? And he got to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized. When you're baptized, aren't you filled? or completely that's what it it's showing you'll be see on the day of pentecost didn't it say they were all filled with the holy spirit yeah and it began to speak with us uh, that's a spirit fulfillment because they're filled with the holy spirit see okay. and began to speak with other tongues as the holy spirit gave them mother and so when you're filled with the holy spirit there's no room for the devil because you're filled <laughs> so that galatians six and eight it'll tell you uh, well, it, it tells you one thing, one part of it. Okay, thank you. All the all the verses that are on that particular chart. Yeah. If if you look the verses up, all the verses tell you part of the um, spiritual fulfillment. And you have Hebrews the sixth chapter there, verse one through three. Would you get the chart again, Lenore? Please. Oh, I'm sorry, were you going to read that verse? <laughs> all right. Um, so you, you have these, all these verses here. They, they tell you a, a few things about how he died and what was accomplished when he died. But Hebrews, the sixth chapter, I believe that's where it is. He talks about leaving the principles of the doctrine of Yahshua. And that always really confused me because like, how could you ever leave the principles? But he was talking about leaving the foundation of the things that Yahshua came in and fulfilled. And all the things that Yahshua came in and fulfilled, the physical water baptism, the ceremonies, the suppers, that stuff. Those are the things that we leave behind physically so. And then it's translated and you're, when you're translated into the kingdom then you're looking at it in a spiritual way now. And that's what uh, the spiritual fulfillment is, is you're looking at all the things that Yahshua fulfilled, but they're in a spiritual way now. There is a baptism, just like he just quoted there in 2 Corinthians, we're baptized into one spirit. We do eat Yahshua's supper. We do have, you know, all the things that were back under the law that he fulfilled, there is a spiritual principle too. And those huh? are the things now that we're concerned with. We're not married to the flesh anymore. Our soul is not connected to the flesh. Our soul is now connected to Yahshua's spirit and he's teaching us and guiding us. And if you, if you look up the verses on the charts, it is a, a fantastic exercise anyway, but it just tells you a lot of things about these things that we have questions about. Okay, I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Let me mention and, something. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think you read Romans 8 and 4 earlier, but uh, that's very, very relevant here where he talks about the righteousness of the law being fulfilled in us, not by us, but in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit, Yahshua himself, is in our soul, and he is fulfilling, satisfying, bringing to pass, bringing into reality the righteousness of the law, not the physical practices of the Old Testament law, but the righteousness of the law of the spirit, he is fulfilling that in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, uh, if you go to Dr. Kinley's pink pamphlet, the clergy pamphlet, yeah. there uh, is quite a few examples in there where he talks about the law of prophecy fulfillment and then the spiritual fulfillment. And there are examples such as the... Um, Baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit instead of baptism of water. A circumcision is the circumcision of the heart or mind of the lips, uh, etc. Instead of the circumcision of the physical body, um, you know, various different things like that. Washing is not the washing 
of a physical body, but the cleansing of your soul, your mind, um, all those things are spiritual fulfillment. The uh, partaking of the feasts is not the eating of physical lamb or crackers and grape juice or anything like that, but it's partaking of the Holy Spirit uh, distributed, shared through the body of Yahshua, the brethren. So those are examples of spiritual fulfillment. And in fact, this was brought up to me, and I did a little lecture on this, I think it was, yeah, with um, the Phoenix class here just a while back, because somebody was uh, bringing up this thing about, well, what does it really mean that we have spiritual fulfillment? And as you go through the examples and you see each one, I think it becomes much more clear. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That was beautiful. I am very grateful. Thank you, Yashua. Yes. Um, I just like to make a comment. I, I've heard the statement say, if you stop going to church, that'll get rid of the, the negative spirit. <laughs> Because now we all want to be uh, in the assembly of Yahshua Messiah. And like you said, that's our real husband. And now you're under the sun, see, which is the light of the day. So I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, okay, thank you all. I have a question, if I may ask. In the transcript, Dr. Kenley states, and I heard Frank, I hope he can expound more about this. Eve was not a sinful woman when Yahshua brought him and gave him to her. And then I, I see in scripture where Eve was made subject to vanity in Romans, I, believe, I think it's 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 20. And Eve is the mother of all living, which uh, points to creation. Um, but if someone could expound more about that, I would appreciate it. Because Frank said he heard Dr. Kennedy say that. And I see it written in the transcript. And you said something about a false doctrine being put out about something regarding Eve. So that's my question. Yeah, they said that Adam was the law. So when Eve got out of her, that made her a sinner just as soon as she got out of him. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that wasn't true. And that's what he's saying there. And how Joshua fulfilled that. Well, see, when Adam was put under a deep sleep, he, uh, Yahweh went into his side. Dr. Kinley said that when Adam died, that was Adam dying without sin. So that means he didn't have any sin. Right. And then when the woman came out of him, the woman came forth from him. She wasn't sinful. Mm -hmm. And then when he wakes up, there's his uh, bride or, you understand? Right. Now, Joshua fulfills that because when he dies on the cross, he dies without sin. Then when they go into his side, they pierce him aside after he's dead. Then when he resurrects, the first person he sees is Mary Magdalene, whom he cast out seven demons. That's why he cast out seven demons out of Mary Magdalene. Because Yahshua is not going to appear to a sinful woman because uh, Adam, Eve wasn't a sinful woman. See that? Yeah. So when, why does the scriptures say that she was subject to vanity? What does that mean then? It doesn't say Eve was. It says the creature. It creation. says the creature, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's uh, Romans 8 and 20 or 23. The thing is, is that Look, uh, you know, the reason, you know, yes, she was deceived. The satanic spirit came to her. It's all, I mean, they're in the most holy place. There's only one direction to go, and that's down. Mm -hmm. Plus, the satanic spirit had already deceived one third the angelic host, or they had caused them to sin, and there was a war, and they're cast out. Right. So, to repeat that, it happens in the physical. And plus, Yahweh has a purpose, and it's Yahshua, which is Yahweh is salvation. Well, he has to create a situation where somebody needs to be saved. <laughs> you understand? Right. So 
when you saw, so it was the satanic spirit that deceived her and caused her to sin. And it does say uh, that because of her beauty, I mean, it's, there's a lot of stuff in the Ellen book about it. So it does show that she was made subject to vanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, that, I think you ought to read that. It's Romans 8 and what? Uh, 20. 20. 20? Yeah. yeah. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. So see, the creature was subject, made subject to vanity, mm -hmm. not willingly. In other words, you didn't ask for it. Right. You understand? She didn't, she didn't say, oh, I want to be subject to vanity. But why he made the creature subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. That's what you want to look for, right. is that he's going to bring salvation. You have hope that you can get out of that situation. You see that? Yeah. 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 Okay, keep reading. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. So that's it. You could be subject to vanity and be in that, but the whole point is through Yahshua Messiah, you can be delivered from that bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. You can be born again. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, you can see that, that he, he does talk about the one part, but you want to focus on the salvation part, the, the back end of it, you see? Right. You know, uh, Yahweh does create the situation. You know, it was an eating. It was an eating that brought him down. Right. And then just like when they, what got him out of Egypt, didn't they have to eat? Right, the lamb. Yeah. And that's a physic. That's those are physic. Uh, so it's an eating that brought it down. It was an eating that got them out of Egypt or out of that bondage. Well, it's the eating or the believing of the gospel in our hearts and minds, right. and being a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. That's when you're in the, you've d d been delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty. Uh, you know, salvation through Yahshua. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So our souls. So that's kind of like what the thing was about was that that Romans seven, that's him before he received the Holy Spirit under the law. He's a sinner. He's deceived. He's trying to do good, but he couldn't. It takes the Holy Spirit, you know, that which he would do, he didn't do. And that which he wasn't supposed to do, he was doing it. Well, that's before his conversion. He's a sinner. Then Yahshua comes to die and take away the sin of the world. See, and now uh, when when he's converted, uh, like it says in Second Corinthians five seventeen, if any man be in the Messiah, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. See, you know that's the former life. All things are become new. See, when Yahshua was in the flesh, yes, he did do physical things, but it was to fulfill them. And then now everything's new. It's about the spirit now. It's a whole different age. This age is completely different from those previous ages because man can have the, the Holy Spirit's being poured out. It's, you, you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit by believing Yahshua, see, and hearing the gospel of Yahshua. You can become a new creature. Right. You know, you can still remember the fool you was, though. Yeah, <laughs> just like he was remembering all the stuff he, you know, his life before he received the Holy Spirit. But then he said, "But now, was well, therefore now that's in this age since he's got the Holy Spirit, there is no condemnation to them that which are in Yahshua Messiah, which walk not after the flesh but of the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Yahshua Messiah made us made me free from the law of sin and death." what the law could, could not do. And, he, and Dr. Kim, you saw him do that, that if you're in the law of the spirit of life, <clears throat> that's not the LSD, right. law of sin and death. That's not, and LSD is also loose for Satan devil. You understand? In other words, he takes you from his clutches, see? For so uh, for, uh, the law of spirit of life in Yahshua Messiah may be free from the law of sin and death. For what the law, that's the law of sin and death. And really, that's what, Adam was given. Wasn't he given the law of sin and death? If he sinned, he's going to die, wasn't he? Yes. 
in the day that you eat thereof, you'll surely die. That was a law of sin and death. And he ate and he died. So he died to bring sin into the world, but Yash was dying to take it out of the world. See? Yeah. Uh, make, you know, uh, and that you might be married to another. That was what, <laughs> and that's the Holy Spirit. You see, so it says, um, uh, let's see, uh, for law, spirit, life in Yash Messiah has made me free from law, sin, death. For what the law could not do when it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sent his son and for sin to condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Yeah. So that's the Holy Spirit being fulfilled. That's what Terry was getting into. Not by us. Yeah, it was fulfilled in us. That's a good point. Uh, so that is the spirit fulfillment. <laughs> that's right. And then, you know, then he goes on with that. Was it the fifth verse? Uh, we're in Romans 8 now, Lenore. Oh, but where she was, that's some good stuff too, though. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Mm -hmm. So it says, so we just spent the fourth verse. Uh, uh, verse. Or like the third verse, what, for what the law could not do and it was weak through the flesh. They had carnal ordinances. Mm -hmm. They were sinners. They pointed out their sin. Yahweh sent his own son, the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. He brought it to an end that the rights of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, it's now in the spirit. That's the change that took place there from the old covenant. That, in other words, he's the sun. Doesn't the sun, don't you have seasons of the year and the sun is relationship to the earth? Yeah. So he brought an end to the winter, fall and winter from Adam. You know, they were, they were dead and buried. Mm-hmm. Now he's bringing in resurrection and newness of life, see, and pouring out the fruit of the spirit. That the rights of law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And isn't that what we see? Isn't that the way our previous life was? That's yeah. all you did. You was after the flesh and you was minding the things of the flesh. That's what it was all about. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. See, and that's what we are. That's why, that's how you, that's your state and condition when you came into school. You were dead. And just by taking a seat, you can eat. You can eat your way out of it. Mm -hmm. Believe the gospel. <laughs> that's soul food. <laughs> mm -hmm. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh. See, that's why he has, you have to divorce the flesh to marry the spirit. You can't do those fleshly things to right. please Yahweh. See, wow. for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither can be. So them that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. You'll say, wait a minute. Aren't we in fleshly bodies? It isn't talking about that. It's talking about in the, those things under the old covenant and physical things. You got to worship him in spirit and truth. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you, dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Messiah, he is none of his. Now, you see that? Now, uh, you know, some people say everybody got the Holy Spirit. Well, <laughs> it's obvious that they don't. Well, that the veil is still up. It hasn't been rented, right? No. Well, yeah, a lot yeah, of people could a... be in class too, right? Huh? A lot, right. a lot of us could be in class and even learn how to uh, repeat this gospel and not have the spirit in us. So it really does take uh, uh, self-examination, and uh, you know, really does take the Holy Spirit to actually be uh, not just you know. Um, hearers of the word and speaking it but doing the law doing uh being part one with yashua they receive something yeah it's a great from. mystery for sure yeah you know i mean because there's a lot of people claim they got the holy spirit Do you understand i mean everybody said nobody likes this nobody says i'm the devil <laughs> I've got demons that's right me. you understand yeah i mean but the whole thing is you want you got yeah, you should yeah, make sure it's Joshua in you before you start claiming things 
and they did read right. because you could be blaspheming you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, we do hope the best for everybody, but sure. But that's well, the seen... spirit is powerful. Right. I've I've witnessed brethren that were really great on the floor, and then some of the things I saw them do, I was like, wow. And then I saw